So in this video, we're going to talk about how to take the indefinite integral of the hyperbolics and of the inverse trig functions. This may not be in your particular Calc 1 course. Some courses have it in Calc 1, some have it in Calc 2. So if, if you don't have this in your Calc 1 course, feel free to skip it and go on to the next video, but you're certainly welcome to watch. Now, in the previous ones where we were doing the antiderivative and the indefinite integral, we were, I guess, the majority of the time, we talked about the power rule. We talked about recognizing the pattern of the derivative of sine as cosine. So the integral of cosine is sine. And so we talked about looking for patterns. We talked about... Um, new substitutions to make things fit the power rule. Well, we're going to be looking for different patterns now. And if you remember, when we first learned how to take the derivatives of these hyperbolics and the inverse trig, there was some, you know, com completely kind of out of the norm of expectations of what the derivatives look like. You started off with something that was either hyperbolic or trig related, and it turned out in a lot of times, except for the hyperbolics, but the inverse hyperbolics and the inverse trigs ended up with these fractions, and they had things like 1 over 1 plus x squared, or the square root of x squared minus 1, or different things like that. It, you know, they didn't look like inverse trigs or inverse hyperbolics anymore. So that's going to be a different pattern to have to look for, and we'll talk about that a lot. But Let's get started and let's talk about the inverse trig. And these are the derivatives and how to take them. If you've forgotten how to do that and you're feeling a little rusty and you're thinking, maybe I should review that, there'll be a link in the description that's right below the video to get back to those derivatives so that you can take a brief review, see how it works, because it's, it's easier to back them up if you remember how to do them in one direction, it's easier to back it up. Okay, so here we go. So let's try a problem, and let's try the integral of x squared dx over the square root of 1 minus x to the 6th. Now, there's a specific kind of an order, I think, that it works best in, if you can do it this way. And like, when you learn math, you typically learn lists, how to do things. First, I'm going to try this, and I try that, then I do something else. So we're going to talk about the list here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to look at what we've got, and we're going to look to try to find the pattern that it's following. So we're going to look over at our list of possibilities. That's a list over here, OK, and find the pattern. Then we're going to make or rearrange, let's say rearrange, if needed, our problem to fit the pattern. Then we're going to take our best guess as to what u is. And then we're going to find out what du is and work that back into our problems. Your lists don't have to be complete sentences. You certainly can have complete sentence lists. But they can be just little brief reminders um, just to keep your brain on task and to keep it flowing forward. OK, so let's look at the problem that we have. All right, so we have our list about what we're going to do for for we're going to look and find the pattern, rearrange our problem, find u and du. Let's look at our specific problem. Let's look at x squared dx over 1 minus x to the 6. And if you look over here at this list, I've already marked which ones have the square roots on the bottom. Let's start there with our little pattern. Okay. Now, notice that these two down here, whatever we're squaring right here, appears there. 
and what we're squaring here appears there. And I don't have that off to the side. I've got an x squared above it, but I don't have anything right here. So I am going to exclude these two. So then we look at these and we go, all right, I, I don't have an x squared minus one. There's a minus right here. Didn't print out very well. And here, I have a one minus x squared. So the one that I'm looking for is this one right there. All right. Now, so I think I'm using that for my pattern. The problem with it is, is that this pattern has an x to the squared and I have an x to the six. So now I need to go through this where I'm going to rearrange, modify, um, factor, do whatever I can do in order to see if I can get it into that pattern. So here's my x squared. I'll worry about that in a minute. And this would be the square root of one minus. Now, could I make x to the six look like something squared? Yep. So x cubed squared fits that pattern. Right? So now I have my pattern. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what I think u should be. And u is this part that you're going to square right in here. So u would be x cubed. All right? Now, when I do this and take the derivative with respect to x, I get 3x squared. And so du would be 3x squared dx. Now, we've got u. We took du, right? Now we have to make our problem show the u and du. So we're going to change variables to u. All right, so what I've got, let's think about this. I've got one minus x cubed squared, x squared dx. But what my du needs is this three. And I don't have this three, that three right there. Now, is there a way to get a three there if I don't have one? Sure. I put a three right there and then I undo it. So this is going to be one third of three x squared dx. Now what that says is that this part right here matches my du. And this part inside the square is u. So this is one third integral to use on top, square root of one minus u squared. Okay. Now this one, other than this one up here is x's and you've got u's. This says if you've got the pattern, right? Because there's an understood one right here. And remember when you took the derivative of these formulas, typically didn't do the dx like that. They have the ddx here. They haven't moved it over. So that would be the inverse sine. Okay, so this is one third inverse sine of u plus c. But we didn't start off with u's, so we're going to change it back. So it's the inverse sine of and u was x cubed. So this is x cubed plus c, right? And that's what the integral of x squared dx over the square root of one minus x to the six looks like. Now, for your particular list, your list may have more parts. Your list may be more brief. Some people say, okay, I change it to you, and then I'm gonna change it back to the given variable. And my last one is don't forget. Can you guess what I'm going to say? 
the plusy. <laughs> okay. All right. That'll get you if you don't. All right. Here we go. Let's do the integral. Here's dx over x square root of 4x squared minus 1. All right. So we're looking at something that's got, you know, a square here in the front, some sort of x term in the next to it in front. So let's look for something like that. And now this is x squared minus 1. So let's look here. This one also doesn't have a minus very clear. All right. So do you see one that looks about right? I'm thinking it's this one. Now notice that whatever this is right here that you're going to square, it appears right there. Okay, so let's look this over. So I'm thinking I'm going to do the inverse secant and I'm going to write this over here so you can see it. It's not an equals right there. Now keep in mind that this has to match that. Okay? So let's see how close we are. Now, this is not, notice that whatever this square applies to, it squares, it squares all of it, not just the x. It squares what's in place of the x. So what you would have to have is dx over x, 2x squared minus 1, okay? So this part, all of this has to be squared, not just the x. It can't be 4x squared. It has to be quantity squared. And whatever this is, this has to be over there, not just an x, okay? So we're going to have to work both of those pieces. You okay so far? Right. Now, so I found my pattern. I'm working on making my particular pattern match the given information I was given. Okay, so I'm kind of almost there. I've got the, I've got the quantity squared. I don't have a 2x right here. All right, so... I'm going to kind of work on you and that at the same time. But that's my goal, is to try to fix this part at the same time. All right, so let's talk about what u is. Now, u is 2x. So when you take the derivative of it, you get 2. So du is 2dx. Okay? So... The dx part needs a 2, all right, and we need a 2 for the denominator. So we need a 2 as a multiplier in both the numerator and the denominator. Is that possible? Yeah. We just multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, and they're going to cancel each other out. Right? So technically, I have not changed my original given problem. It just looks like it while I try to make it match the pattern. Okay? So now that I've got it to match the pattern. Okay. I was looking for 2dx to be du, and I've got that. So this is du over. All right, I've got the 2x here in the front. And remember, 2x is u, so that's u, square root. Here's my 2x again right here. So this is u squared minus 1. Okay. See how that matches, except that these are x's, and I have u's at the moment. So when I integrate this, it's going to be the inverse secant 
of u plus c. And then I change it back to the x's. And you remember we said it was going to be 2x, so we change it back. And this is the integral of dx over x square root of 4x squared minus 1. All right. So if you like patterns and you like puzzles and you like trying to find like, I think years ago they used to have that where's Waldo thing or they'd have things where you have to look for hidden patterns. Um, I think the New York Times now has a connections puzzle. If you like looking for underlying patterns or the tile thing they have in the New York Times, if you like looking for patterns, this is probably something you're enjoying. And if you don't like looking for patterns, you have to do it anyway. Okay, so just practice. And if you kind of have a method, it will get easier, right? Now, if you look, so here we've got 9 minus 16x squared under a square root. I don't remember anything with numbers other than 1s. Okay, so if you look back up here, though, and think, now if it was just a 1, okay, if it was just a 1, and I have 1 minus something x squared, and I don't have anything in front of the square root, I think I'm looking at this one right there. Okay. So let me write it down back down here where you can see it. So I'm thinking I might be able to work with the fact that the derivative of the inverse sine of x is 1 over 1 minus x squared, and all of that's under a square root. Okay? So you see how it's kind of close? <laughs> the nice thing about math is, is that if it's not what you want it to look at, you can probably try to maneuver it into what you are seeking to find. It's not like you can do that with English or history. You either know the date that some particular historical activity occurred on or you don't know it. But if you can just sort of keep thinking you can do this and having confidence in yourself, you know, if you just sort of hang in there with it on the math, you can maneuver things into into easier to work with formats. Let's just say easier. Let's not say easy. Easier. All right. So you look at it and go, I just... I don't know what to do with a 9. I just need a 1. Well, you go. Is, is there a way to get a, a 1 from a 9? Yeah, you could subtract 8. But there is nothing that says that you can subtract 8 from two things that we've practiced very much, you know, to get an equivalent object. Because after you subtract 8, unless you're going to add 8 back in, it's not going to be equivalent. Can we maybe factor out a 9, right? If I divide 9 by 9, won't I get 1? I don't know that that's right. Let's get, I actually do know, but let's pretend that I'm taking a test and I'm not very comfortable with this. I don't know necessarily at this point whether it's something that I want to do, but blank is definitely wrong. And so let's try something. And so let's try dividing out a nine. Let's see what happens. Okay, now when you divide out a nine, you're going to divide it out of both terms. So nine divided by nine is one. That's looking good. All right. Um, 16 doesn't divide by 9, but you can kind of make it look like that. Okay, so 16 over 9 x squared. Now, does it make sense? Because 9 times 1 would be 9, and 9 times 16 ninths, the 9s would cancel, and you'd have 16. Okay, looks kind of weird, but okay, right? Okay, here we go. So I factored out a 9. And what I could do, let's go ahead and do it, is to say, all right, I'm going to put dx right here over the square root. And the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the 3 out. And we'd have 1 minus 16 ninths x squared. Now I'm, I'm feeling kind of good about this. 
I've got I've got my one that I wanted right here, but here I wanted some quantity squared, and what I've got is 16 ninths x squared. Is there a way to make it look like some quantity squared? So sure, I can make this be 4 thirds x squared. That would look like a, some quantity squared, right? Okay, so I think I've got my pattern. So I've got my particular problem to look like the pattern it seemed closely resemble. Okay, now I'm going to try to figure out what u is. So u is, let's say, 4 thirds x. It's the quantity you're going to square. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 4 thirds. And then du would be 4 thirds d. X. So in order for me to get that UDU format, I need 4 thirds DX. All right, I've got the DX. I just don't have the 4 thirds part. So can I acquire a 4 thirds right here? Yes, as long as you undo it by multiplying by a 3 fourths out here. Doing okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It will get better. All right. And some of y'all may be really liking this. All right. So I'm going to have the, don't multiply those back out. If you multiply those back out and get one, you've just undone what you did. So I've got three fourths, right? I'm going to pull that three that's in the bottom out. So it's going to be one third integral, four thirds dx over square root one minus four thirds x squared. And students are always asking me, do I have to show all these steps? And I'm like, no, not if you're right. Okay, but if you're wrong and you're wanting me to give you partial credit, I can give you more partial credit if you show me more of what your thought processes were. So feel free to kind of feel how confident you are in this problem. And if you're really, really conf confident and you just show me a minimum number of steps, you'll get full credit if you're correct. And if you show me a minimum number of steps and I cannot read your mind, so I do not know where you went wrong, uh, you don't get much partial credit for it. So show me what you can. So this part right here is my du. And this part right here is my u. So this is the threes cancel. Now you can cancel those because you're not going to get one, right? You just can't cancel those, all right? So you'd have one fourth, and we're going to integrate du over the square root of one minus u squared. All right? So this would be the one fourth inverse sine of u plus c. And now we're going to change it back to our original variable. And that would have been our 4 thirds x, or you could say it was 4x over 3 plus c. So this is what the result was for dx over the square root of 9 minus 16x squared. All right. Now, let's try one that's a bit different. If you um, feel like you need a drink, not that, okay. Feel like you need a drink of water, grab a drink of water. Okay, or something like that, because this one's going to take you to giving me just a little bit more concentration because it's, it's a little bit kind of a step up, maybe another level of difficulty. So take a breather, take a deep breath, grab a drink of water. And let's try this one. All right, now, knowing where we just came from, 
where we were factoring out nines and whatever, you know, that that might have been a nice lead in where we factored out a nine. But I've not seen one like this where we have secant squared in the denominator and secant x, tangent x in this section. Okay. And since we're on this particular section, you might think, well, I should probably use that pattern. Keep in mind when you take a test, it probably has all the patterns in it, including just the regular trig, trig formulae. So it's, it's a little bit more difficult recognizing patterns. But since we're in this section, let's go with the fact that I think it may be, I hate to say it, some sort of inverse function. <laughs> okay. If it is, let's look what one it might possibly be. And I can get a 1 out of that 9. I would just factor a 9 out. And after having done the last problem, you can factor a 9 out of the 4, right? Going 4 9ths, right? And I could maybe do something with the secant squared. So let's look for something that goes 1 plus something squared. No square roots. Okay. So you go all the way back up here. So 1 plus something squared, no square roots, and no negative. OK, this one would work, right? OK, so inverse tangent. Let me go way down here where we were and write it down so you can see it. So the derivative of the inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So I'm thinking that's the pattern I'm, I'm looking for. Now I'm going to see if I can manipulate my specific problem into that pattern. So let's see. So let's go ahead and, and divide the 9 out. And if we're going to do that 1 plus something squared pattern, here's my 9. This would be 1 plus 2 thirds secant x squared. Correct? All right. Forgot a parenthesis. All right. Now. Let's think about that a second. If if that's going to work, and at this point in time, we feel pretty confident it's going to work, but let's keep going and see if we can come up with du. All right. So if that's going to work, and I'm going to write this over here to the side, if then I'm thinking u might be 2 thirds secant x squared. Is it the square? or without the square? Give you a minute to think about it. Is u with the square? Or is u without the square? It sounds kind of like some sort of strange sentence. Is u without the square? <laughs> Sorry, it's not u, u. OK, it's this u. <laughs> All right, with the square or without the square? Because students do that a lot. They'll sit here and say, OK, this is 2 thirds secant x squared. because that's what you've got right there. And I see that a lot on my test. Is that correct? No. U is the part that's inside the square. But sometimes when these problems get kind of beyond the norm, like you get kind of used to, OK, it's going to be like a 4 thirds x or something. But when it starts coming up with unusual things like secant x, Sometimes it's just so easy to get just a little bit off, OK? So u is 2 thirds secant x. It's the inside, the inside of what's being squared. OK. So when I, if this is going to work, du dx has to be in there, right? So 2 thirds. What's the derivative of secant? The derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. Hey, this is this is looking kind of good. Okay, 
So du would be 2 thirds secant x tangent x dx. Okay, do I have all that part? So I'm looking to see if I've got du. Well, I've got the secant x tangent x part. What am I missing? Okay, so you're missing the 2 thirds. Can you just insert a multiplier of 2 thirds? Sure, if you undo it by multiplying by 3 halves. Okay, so I'm thinking I've got 3 halves. I'm going to pull the 9 out. And so I'd have 2 thirds secant x tangent x dx over 1 plus 2 thirds secant x squared. So let's see. This 3 cancels into 9, and that leaves you 1 sixth. This part is du. So here's du. over 1 plus, and remember u is this interior part. So this is plus u squared. That looks much better. Doesn't it look better? <laughs> All right. So this is 1 sixth, and that's the pattern for the inverse tangent. And then we change it back to our original variables for what we had set u equal to. Don't forget the plus c. So this is secant x tangent x dx over 9 plus 4 secant squared x. I have to admit, I kind of like the result better than the start. What do you think? My boxes leave something to be desired. All right. On we go. All right, let's go all the way back up to the top. Okay. So let's look some at these hyperbolics. I have to admit that even though part of me is grateful when it's just the hyperbolics instead of these inverse things, because it's not that difficult to see the pattern, I don't think they're actually as much fun. <laughs> so these are kind of more low key. All right, the other ones are more fun. All right, so let's do, what's the integral of sine h1 minus 2x dx. These aren't quite as stressful. So now what I'm trying to find is what did I take the derivative of to get the hyperbolic sign? Well, that would be this one right here. So I took the derivative of cosine hyperbolic cosine to get hyperbolic sine, but I need to figure out what u is. So I already know my pattern, right? The patterns are much easier to determine, usually a little bit more clear cut. So I need to figure out what u is, and the u would be the part that the hyperbolic sign is applying to. So du dx is minus 2. So du is minus 2 dx, multiplying both sides by dx, right? All right, so this is the du that I want. And I don't have it. I've got the dx part, but I don't have the minus 2. Is there a way to get a minus 2 in there? Sure. You're probably already ahead of me at this point. So I can put the minus 2 in there as long as I take it right back out and undo it. So a negative 2 times a ne negative 1 half would essentially cancel each other if I went ahead and did that. But then I'd be back to the original problem. So I'm going to leave it this way. So it's minus 1 half. And this is the hyperbolic sign of u because this is u, and this is du, right? So the integral of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine. So 
somehow it's kind of a letdown a little bit after the last stuff, isn't it? Kind of like, well, that was kind of a bit too straightforward. A little better box there. All right. Let's try x squared hyperbolic cosecant x cubed over 4 dx. All right. Now, what did you take the derivative of to get hyperbolic cosecant? I think I left my square off down here, and I did. Okay. So, what did you take the derivative of to get the hyperbolic cosecant squared? Sorry about that. All right. How about hyperbolic cotangent? All right. So, I think that's going to be my pattern. So, let's let you be x cubed over 4 du dx would be bring the power down take one off the power so du is 3 fourths x squared dx and I've got the x squared I just don't have the 3 fourths part so I'm going to rearrange just a little bit So I'm going to have my 3 fourths x squared dx, because I'm going to pull the x squared back here. And if I have the 3 fourths that I've just inserted as a multiplier, I would have to undo it by doing 4 thirds. Okay. And it doesn't have a negative. And remember how you used to take care of that when you would have the derivative of cosine, it's negative sine, and if the sine wasn't negative, then it must have started off as a negative cosine, right? Sort of like that, okay? So what I'm going to have is the negative, because it must have been negative to start with if I'm now positive. Four thirds. I put that down. Okay. Of this. So this is the negative four thirds hyperbolic cotangent. And I change my variables back. And this would be the integral of x squared hyperbolic cosecant squared x cubed over 4. Um, dx. Okay. Um, let's try Let's try this one. This one's kind of a bit of a challenge. I had two to pick from. I think I'm going to pick this one. All right. Now, this one is, a, you know, kind of a little like, I don't know, a little bit more of an extra challenge. So we've got hyperbolic sines and hyperbolic cosines together. They're not the same powers. That's sort of a clue. 
See, see how this one is cubic? Okay, so they're not a match. So it looks like if you tried to kind of pair them up, you'd have an extra hyperbolic cosine left over, right? So let's see what we can do. Now, the problem with this is, is that um, I don't have, I don't have the right pattern to sit there and say, let's let you be, um, let's say hyperbolic squared. Okay, because remember that square is actually on the outside. So if you did the du dx, you'd have two hyperbolic sine, come back in and take the derivative and you get hyperbolic cosine. So that would work for this one and one of the hyperbolic cosines, but then I'd have two hyperbolic cosines left over. Where do they go? All right, so that's not going to work very much because I've got two extra hyperbolic cosines if I do that. Now what you can do, and sometimes people forget that you can still manipulate stuff, hyperbolic cosine squared of x is equal to one plus hyperbolic sine squared of x. That goes back to the hyperbolic trig uh, manipulations that you can do. So what I could do is to make these all be sines, hyperbolic sines, and that's what we're gonna do. Kind of like uh, when you used to do proofs and you would try to get everybody to be the sines if you could, or all of them to be cosines. And so we're going to multiply this by one plus hyperbolic sine squared of x with an extra hyperbolic cosine left. Remember that we had cubes, right? So this just takes care of the square, but there's still one left over. So this is, if I multiply this out, plus hyperbolic sine to the fourth of x. Hyperbolic cosine. So I could think of this as hyperbolic cosine, because remember, you can separate these out. So it's like the distributive property. So this is going to apply here and here, which is good because the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine, right? So let's see where we would get if u was the hyperbolic sine of x du dx would be the hyperbolic cosine of x, which we have. So here's hyperbolic cosine, hyperbolic cosine. So it looks like I've got the du part, right? du is hyperbolic cosine dx. So if u is hyperbolic cosine, you have the integral of u squared du plus the integral of u to the fourth du. So how do you do u squared du? It's add one to the power divide by the new power add one to the power, divide by the new power, plus C. So change it back. So it's one third hyperbolic cubed of X and one fifth hyperbolic sine to the fifth of X plus C. Alrighty, let's do just at least a couple more. And again, we're back to the ones that look like x squared on the bottom, x squared minus one, one minus x squared, the square root of x squared minus one. So we're looking for a pattern. Then we try to make our problem look like the pattern. Then we determine what's u, find du, clean it up a little bit, integrate it, change it back to the original variable. All right, so let's start off with one. 
and let's integrate dx over the square root of 9x squared minus 4. Now, at this point, after having watched the rest of the earlier part of the video, you should be kind of comfortable with factoring something out. But I wanted to point out to you, because we're used to, from algebra, we're sort of used to factoring out the 9 because it's in the lead. But the thing that rather drives the whole thing is looking for a 1. Okay, the, the 1 plus x squared, 1 minus x squared, um, whatever you have going on, we're, we're, this is sort of driving it. We're trying to get it to be a 1. So it looks like we might be dividing everybody by 4. Now if we do that, we have this x squared, and we would have a 1 here after we factor that out. So we're looking for something with a square root on the bottom and x squared minus 1. <coughs> Sorry. So that would be, it looks like, this one. So it looks like we're doing inverse hyperbolic cosine. So let's try to get started. And we would say, all right, let's work for that one first. Factor out the four. Now, remember that this quantity here inside this square over here, looking at the inverse cosine, we blow that a little bit bigger. <coughs> so this has to be a quantity squared, not it, just the x squared. So this would be dx square root of 4 times 3 halves x squared minus 1, and this entire thing is times 4. Let me put little squares on there just so you can see it better. All right, maybe that'll help a little bit to see it. All right. Now, let's just write that over. All right, now if that's true, then u would be 3 halves x. And when I take the derivative of that with respect to x, you get 3 halves. du would be 3 halves dx. So let's see what we've got. I've got the dx. I don't have the 3 halves. So what I would want to do is to have a 3 halves right here. And in order to make that mathematically sound, I would have to multiply by 2 thirds so that I'm effectively multiplying by a version of 1. Don't multiply those out and get one, though. You'll just have undone what you did. All right? So what we would then have is 2 thirds. Now I'm going to pull the square root of 4 out. It's in the denominator. The square root of 4 is 2 and having it in the denominator is one half. And so what we would have in the top is that this part right here is du. And then down here we'd have the square root. Remember we took the four out as the square root of four is two. And then we would have u squared minus one. So this would be, <coughs> excuse me, one third because the twos here can cancel, All right? And then the integral of du over u squared minus 1 is that inverse hyperbolic. So it's the inverse hyperbolic cosine of u. Don't forget the plus c. And then we change it back. And u is 3 halves x or 3x over 2 plus c. And that would be what the integral of dx over the square root of 9x squared minus 4 
Yes. Now, so think about what we're doing because you you you, you need to have sort of a loose strategy prepared, maybe written down, memorized about how each type works so that when you hit a quiz or a test, you can sort of run through your library of what what strategies you might choose from. So remember, if you're looking at these that have the inverse hyperbolics or the inverse trig ones, we're looking for a pattern. We make our given problem as close as we can get to the pattern, decide what U is, find DU, clean up my given one so that it all matches, and then integrate it and change it back. Okay, now this one, kind of a little bit of a step up. But you've gone through this whole video. You're seeing how these things work. I know you're getting the hang of this. And so this one is a, just a little bit much more, just a little bit more intricate. Okay, but you can do this because you have been developing confidence in yourself and skills. So. Definitely you can do this. Here we go. Now, can you see that? Let's look at that inverse tangent hyperbolic for just a second. Okay, if you look at that right here, do you see how its derivative is 1 over 1 minus x squared? And I have x squared minus 1 on the bottom, so that's really close, right? So I'm going to think of this. as the inverse hyperbolic tangent times 1 over x squared minus 1 dx. Because that looks like it's really close to the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent, right? I mean, we want 1 minus x squared, and it's x squared minus 1. So let's think about this for just a second about how far we can go. So I'm going to write this down where you can see it. So the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic tangent is 1 over 1 minus x squared, right? If we let u be that inverse hyperbolic tangent, then du dx would be 1 over 1 minus x squared. Then du would be 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. OK, now I've got the dx. I've got kind of. The other part, except it's switched around. So what I have is 1 minus x squared here. But what I'm working with is x squared minus 1. So is there a way to take 1 minus x squared and make it look like x squared minus 1? And you may have learned this sort of trick in algebra class. If I factor out a negative, so 1 factoring out a negative is a negative 1. Negative x squared factoring out a negative is x squared, right? And if you check, this is minus x squared. This is plus 1, so that worked. All right, so what I need is this is equivalent to 1 over 1 over 1 minus x squared gx, correct? So here's the negative I factored out. Now what I'm going to do is take that negative and move it all the way to the front. So I have the negative of. Now u is that inverse hyperbolic tangent of x. This, without the negative, is du. So this would be, how do you integrate u? You add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. And then you change it back to the original variables that you had. So you have negative 1 half. u was the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x. You're going to square it. This square is this square plus c. And that's the integral of the inverse hyperbolic tangent over x squared minus 1.
So when you do these, you need to have that general kind of strategy. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to find the pattern. Um, try to get mine close to the pattern. Figure out what U is. Find out what DU is. See if there needs to be a little bit of adjusting for the DU. Then integrate the U's. Change it back to the original variables. So you need a, a general strategy. But, you know, the thing is, is that you have to have a little bit of confidence in yourself. It would be great if you had a lot of confidence in yourself, but you need at least a little. You'll get there to a lot. You know, success builds confidence because you have to try something. If you had looked at this problem right here and went, oh, my gosh, I've never done one like that. How mean of the teacher to ask me a question like that? We've never done one like that. Well, that doesn't help. Okay, it just sort of stalls the brain out and just makes you waste time on, on fussing. So fuss a second or two and then move on. But do you see how it turned out to be not really all that bad, right? I mean, it's kind of a little bit unique, but it wasn't that bad, right? So don't sit there and, and get frustrated to the point where you just give up and don't try. So have your general strategy and keep saying, no, I'm going to do my general strategy and I'm going to see how far this gets me. And maybe somewhere along the way, I'll start going, oh, yes, okay, I'm on a roll. I've got this. This is done. So get, you know, just get busy trying something because blank is definitely wrong. All right. So good luck with these. I hope you get to where you kind of think of them as a big puzzle that you can figure out. Again, in the description, I'll have a link back to where you took the derivatives of these just in case you need a refresher because if you don't remember how to take the derivative of them, it's going to be hard to reverse that process. So check out the description. Good luck, and I'll see you at the next video.